Okay, uh, guess what? We just tied a really great fly, and here it is. But here is what it was supposed to look like. I forgot the best part of all, the rabbit strip. So we're gonna, out you go. And uh, we're gonna get set up with my flexi needle. And we're gonna show you what it's like when you goof up. Now I, I can't really add a rabbit strip to that last fly. It'll fish just fine, but it's not nearly as much fun. So there's a, uh, a drop weight. Um, we're gonna uh, We might show you a speeded up version of the other one. We'll see. The point is, sometimes it doesn't always work out. Sometimes you forget something. So I, I, I told you a lot of wonderful things about why I use a drop weight, why I use a nano sink tube. The basic idea is to penetrate the water more quickly with your fly. Hey, here's a rabbit strip. Won't that be nice? I think, you know, when you get in, when you tie one fly of a pattern at a time, it's really easy. I'm tapering the ends. You've seen me do this before. It's really easy. And again, this body, it's a, uh, copper brown uh, sparkle chenille. Uh, it's easy to forget something when you just do one one offs. So now I'm going to throw on uh, this is an EP foxy brush. Never cut this material with my scissors. This is an olive brown foxy brush. Now you could use a craft fur brush, you could use a summer lads brush. It's all good. You know, we're looking for a general color cast here. I'm gonna do just do how many turns? We do one. And 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 so I'm the reason I'm twisting and pausing here. I'm trying not to trap the longer fibers. Yeah. Now I'll kind of part this fur. I'll crease there so I can put a couple turns of thread in there. I'm using a 10 knot beavis. Now the reason I'm pausing here is I want to add some copper ice dub. And it's possible we may use audio from the first fly and video from it. We may we can do all sorts of things. Do some trimming there. So while we're here, why not put something in we didn't before, which is some grizzly micro. Rubber legs. Let's add a little bit. You know, if you got to go back and do the darn thing over, let's let's add some wiggle. Wiggle, always, always works. It's authentic video at the Caddis Fly Shop. Okay, got some rubber legs. Got some flash. Let's finish up here. Now my goal is to not have a big bulky buildup at the front of this tube. So I think that's enough material. Oh yeah, I, I never got to finish uh, first last time. You'll see so much variety in how people will tie trout streamers in terms of how uh, how much material they use, how bulky the fly is. Uh, some of them are just 
super wads of fur. Uh, some are pretty slender. Um, I, I think it's important to be aware of what flies are producing well in the area you are fishing. I'm convinced you'll find some places where, you know, maybe in murkier water or in higher flows in colder water, the fish may be more likely to take a, uh, we're gonna have to pause here. Okay, we're back. It, it, it's really important to try to figure out if the trout in your area are responding better to sparser or more fully dressed flies because they're different. And sometimes the big bushy flies uh, are what's on the menu and sometimes they're not. So I got my little cone there. That's a nice red one, an extra small. Let's trim. Pretty close. That's more than I need. I usually trim with a razor blade, but I use scissors here to try to keep it where you can see it. Flare the edges of the tube. Make sure the tube is open. And here you go. This is what our fly is supposed to look like. And uh, you can slip a ring eye Gamma Gatsu glow bug hook right in there and you'll be ready to go. For now, I'm gonna thread it back on the flexi needle. We got some rubber legs, we got some flash, we got a rabbit strip. This will make a really nice little trout streamer. I hope you have fun tying this and that you are able to get out and go fishing. Thank you.